Please welcome overgrad finalist team. Since then, more than 200 million lives have been saved by penicillin alone. And if I think about it, I myself would have died twice without antibiotics. But there is something we have to talk about. Pathogenic bacteria are becoming drug resistant at an alarming rate. Already now, 50,000 people die in Europe and the US every year from multi-resistant infections. And this number is about to increase dramatically. It is time to take action. Now the good news is, there are alternatives. Bacteriophages, short phages, are the natural enemies of bacteria. And in fact, there is a phage for almost every bacterium out there. Phages are much more specific than antibiotics, and for us humans, they're absolutely harmless. Now, using phages for treatment is not a new idea. In fact, it has a long and successful application in countries of the former Soviet Union. We met a doctor from one of these countries to find out more about this treatment option. Why is it not used widespread? To answer this question, we have to look at how phages are currently produced. As they strictly require the molecular machinery of the host bacteria, you have to cultivate pathogens in large amounts to isolate the phages from that. You cannot tell what's in there. Would you want to use this or work with it. We reinvented phage production. We present to you Factory, a strain independent, quality controlled and safe way to manufacture bacteriophages. Now, in the initial phase of our project, we met with leading phage experts uh, to, to find out how to design our project and they defined four criteria that have to be fulfilled. So first, the, the phages have to be free of any contamination. The phages have to be correctly identified, the product has to be made absolutely toxin-free, and it has to be made storable for long-term use. So with these four criteria in mind, we set out to design our project. And the basic concept behind it is to use a cell-free system to express phages on the basis of a DNA template. And as simple as this sounds, it works. Here are pictures from an early phase of our project. And on the right, you can see our phages in action, killing bacteria in a petri dish and forming so-called plaques. Now let me introduce the molecular heart of factory to you, a self-free expression system. I have to admit, when I joined iGEM half a year ago, I had never even heard of a self-free system. So I'll give you the explanation I wish someone would have given to me back then. You take cells, you remove the cell wall, and the DNA, that's it. What remains is the molecular machinery of a cell in a tube. Everything needed to produce proteins are entire phages outside of a living cell. Amazing, right? Now this sounds quite simple. You cultivate some cells, you lyse them, you're done. But acquiring cell-free system that has sufficient quality for phage production is not that easy. There are commercially available solutions, but those are quite expensive and we wanted factory to be independent of external suppliers. So we decided to produce our own cell-free system and to optimize it for phage production. Before we could start the optimization, we needed to find a simple and reliable way to assess the quality of our cell-free system. We decided to use the expression of the fluorescent protein m turquoise for quality control. Here you can see a fluorescence time trace of m turquoise expression, and it shows the three advantages of this particular protein. 
It is fast folding, has a high fluorescence intensity and a very low background signal. The expression construct we designed proved very useful for quality control and therefore we made it our favorite biobrick. With our quality control in place, we could start to optimize cell extract preparation step by step. And our main objective was to make the whole process scalable. For cell cultivation, that meant exchanging the traditional shaking flask cultivation for a bioreactor. On the left, you can see the benchmark. Protein expression in a shaking flask produced cell extract. With our bioreactor approach, well, we do not quite reach the same expression levels. But have a look at these error bars. Bioreactor cultivation is more reproducible and it yields four times more cells from the same resources. For the cell lysis step, we started by comparing two commonly used methods, bead beating and sonication. Of these two, only sonication is scalable and it produces cell extract with a higher quality. All in all, we screened more than 50 variations of the cell extract preparation protocol until we found our favorite settings, which you can see on the right. These settings include adding lysozyme to the sonication reaction to increase its performance, and we also increase the volume of the sonication step to match the scale up of the cell cultivation. With our optimized cell-free system, we have a protein expression nine times higher than in the initial product. So we put our optimized system to the test and we tried to assemble phages. And we were very glad to see that it worked. In fact, with our homemade cell-free system, we are able to produce phage titers comparable to those achieved in a commercial solution. With these results, we made an appointment at a local hospital. We met an expert in bacterial infections and antimicrobial resistance to discuss our project with him. And he told us that in order to provide life-saving treatment without delay, factories should be suitable for on-site production. So we went back to the lab and we thought about how to implement the suggestion. We decided to lyophilize our cell-free system. This process also called freeze-drying drying, makes it possible to store the cell-free system at room temperature. And for reactivation, only water is needed. And the best thing is, in our lyophilized cell-free system, we can still produce phages at medically relevant concentrations. Now let's take a step back and look at what we accomplished so far. We optimized the cell-free system by making the preparation process scalable and implementing quality control. Through lyophilization of our cell-free system, factory is able to produce phages on site. And down here you can see the variety of phages we were able to assemble. They include medically relevant phages that we received from our collaboration partners in France and Belgium, and also the T5 phage that was kindly provided to us by the IGEM team Grenoble. Thanks very much for that. Factory can produce any phage anywhere. All right. Uh, let's have a look at the second part of the equation. We need high concentrations of DNA to be able to assemble phages. And to reach international quality and safety standards, it is essential that the DNA is highly pure. Because any contamination of the raw material will lead to a contamination of the final product. <laughs> so in the beginning we performed nanopore sequencing, and there's a common problem with that. We received 35% of all the reads that come from contamination. We optimized our, our protocols, but we felt the need to, for a tool uh, to read contamination on the go while performing nanopore sequencing. We developed SeekInto. It comes packed with state-of-the-art algorithms, long read alignment, a graphical user interface. It is cross-platforms. That means you can use it on any computer, and as a full tutorial online, including documentation and a video tutorial. 
With the help of optimizing our protocols and seek into, we were able to lower our, oh sorry, we're gonna look at the interface first. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the interface. Now I'm a biochemist by training, but it's really intuitive to use. Even I can click a few buttons. Optimizing our protocols and uh, using seek into, we were able to lower our contamination levels to as low as 2%. And we could perform the novo sequencing. In collaboration with a military hospital in Belgium, uh, we were supplied with uh, clinically relevant phages that were previously uncharacterized. And we sequenced them. You can see a circular representation of the genome. It's called the BioCluster. You can check it out on our wiki. While phage assembly in our system appears very simple, it's actually highly complicated. In fact, it is probably one of the most sophisticated self-assembly processes in synthetic biology. And because it's a temporarily orchestrated process, that means every component depends on the previous. It involves processes like the expression of the T7 polymerase, capsid expression, self-assembly of the capsid, and DNA packing. There's also a positive feedback loop where the T7 DNA polymerase amplifies its own genome. And because Factory is a finite system with a limited lifetime, we also looked into degradation. I'm going to spare you the math and get right to the results. We were able to identify two bottlenecks. The first one is the quality of the, of the software system. And using mass spectrometry in combination with our model, we were able to find out that not protein content, but, uh, but not ribosome content, but ribosome quality, uh, ribosome quality is essential for a good cell-free system. The second bottleneck is DNA concentration. In the graph, you can see how much DNA is needed to achieve a certain phage titer. And you can also see that below a certain threshold, it doesn't, suddenly doesn't quite work. But our model works. In fact, when we compared it to the experimental data, we found that it's only off by 0.1 nanomolar, which I think is insane. Back to the equation. We've integrated software to better look at contaminants, and we've added a model to better understand the entire system. And Sorry, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> uh, but our self free system can do so much more. We cannot just use DNA as raw materials, but we can also use RNA and proteins. To our knowledge, nobody has ever done that before. We can integrate purified proteins in combination with DNA into one single phage. So we thought of using this as a means for imaging or purification. So we added a his tag and a yellow fluorescent protein to one of the capsid proteins called HOC. HOC is incorporated into the phage's capsid and can be purified by nickel affinity chromatography. We did that, which you can see on the spot test I just pulled up. The fluorescent imagery shows low autofluorescence in the negative control and high autofluorescence in the sample. We can produce any phage anywhere with any modification. So let's go back with me to the criteria that we wanted to fulfill. First, we have fully sequenced and therefore completely identified our phages. Second, we reduce contamination by improving our DNA purification protocols with the help of our software tool SecInto. Third, we do not store phages, we store the lyophilized cell extract at room temperature and use that then to produce phages on site. But then we looked into antitoxins and we got an unpleasant surprise. Our, and the level of our endotoxins in our cell extract was almost equally high as that 
of a solution with nice bacteria that does not fit our safety criteria and you cannot possibly treat a patient with that. So we had to find a solution. But what should we do? We looked into the biosynthesis pathway of lipid A, which is the most immunogenic endotoxin. And we found out that the toxicity of lipid A is dependent on this one protein called MSPB. So we created an E. coli strain where this gene is deleted, we made cell extract out of it, and we were blown away. We saw an almost 50-fold reduction of endotoxins. With that, we are also able to take the last of our safety and quality criteria and Factory is now ready for therapy. And to demonstrate the clinical application of Factory, we have assembled a phage that is specific for a deadly pathogen, the enterohemorrhagic E. coli, short EHAC. In 2011, EHAC killed more than 50 people in Germany. Now, EHAC is a bacteria that infects the intestine. But in order to reach there, our phages have to pass through the stomach. And that confronts us with the problem that both the low pH and the protein degrading enzymes would rapidly inactivate our phages. So we decided to encapsulate our phages in calcium arginate spheres. Alginate is a food additive and therefore approved for humans. Here you can see a Z stack through one of these capsules where phages are encapsulated um, and stain with cyber gold. So we imitated the oral application of our phages by incubating these capsules in simulated gastric and simulated intestinal fluids. And our results indicate that indeed the capsules protect our phages in the gastric fluid and to release them in the intestinal fluid and they are still fully functional to kill bacteria. So here's the hardware that we created to produce these capsules, our encapsulator. It consists of a nozzle through which the alginate is pumped through, containing the phages. And to ensure that the capsules are monodispersed and tunable in size, the nozzle is connected to a pressurized air chamber. Uh, the airflow shears off a jet of droplets, which then fall into a calcium chloride bath, where they quickly polymerize and become solid and ready for therapy. And this is the hardware, the basic part of it. Uh, it consists of two halves that can be easily assembled and disassembled again. Uh, and here you see the ring which ensures uniform air pressure on the nozzle tip in the middle. With that, we are able to create any phage, anywhere, with any modification for therapy. So we envision Factory at the core of a manufacturing line for personalized phage therapy. Based on rapid diagnosis, suitable phages can be selected from a library of DNA and then produced right in the hospital. And this brings down production time to less than one day and cost of production to less than five dollars. So I would like to thank all the people that were in Munich for the European meetup. In case you've missed it, we upload the great talks that were given there. Uh, to YouTube, check them out. We believe science lives from two things, sharing and teaching. And in this respect, I would like to uh, point out the importance of our educational engagement activities and maybe uh, make you interested in our, our microfluidic bacterial soccer oracle, oracoli. Uh, I would like to thank our labs that hosted us. I would like to thank our collaborators and of course